Hello there everyone and welcome to the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux and which we're playing as everyone's favorite kingdom of Ukraine. But we've got to talk about our kingdom, the kingdom of Ukraine. Proclaimed its independence with German support on the 25th of January 1918. A state of affairs that was quickly ratified by the Peace of the Nations Agreement at the Brest-Litovsk. An initial experiment with socialism in the form of a People's Republic was swiftly expunged by German Baku. This operation, led by the strongman and former general in the Russian army Pavlo Skoropadsky, set the tone for Ukraine's future. It was to be a breadbasket used by military aristocrat elite from across Eastern Europe as a source of food, a convenient market for goods and a military bulwark against the weakened Russian Republic. For a time, the dispute between German and Germany and its Austro-Hungarian ally over Ukrainian rumbled on after the Valkyrie, eventually setting on a compromise whereas King Vasily, an Austrian Archduke born Fra Wilhelm Franz von Habsburg, would rule with the support of Skorowski, who has a German ailed Hetman, while the incredible powers of both civil and military affairs by 1927. German involvement in the Austrian Ausgleich negotiations meant that Ukraine fell de facto into the hands of the Hetman. Uh, with King Vasily becoming an increasingly marginalized figure, Ukraine under the Hetmanat has become the breadbasket of the Reichspakt and made its wealthy landowners exorbitantly wealthy, but at the expense of the Ukrainian peasantry now, almost 20 years after the Valkyrie, the national situation is unstable. The Reich forces us to sell our goods almost exclusively to nations within its sphere of influence, while syndicalists gain popularity amongst the downtrodden rural poor and city workers with each passing day. Both ethnic Russians and pro-Russian population dream of unification with our former master to the east, while Ukrainian nationalists proclaim that our kingdom is no more than a German puppet. It's an immutable truth. Despite these many issues afflicting us, our land is prosperous and fertile, our people industrious and our potential boundless. Shushina Vimerla Ukraina. Well, the Ukrainian government. It's fair to say that our government is divided. While Pavel Skoropatsky does his best to solve the antagonism between the army consisting of former officers of the Russian Imperial Army, the civil administration, most of which actually supports their current position in the Reichspakt, many of our Ukraine's problems can be only be solved with the majority of our population, the kulaks of peasants. I have an opportunity to sell the substantial agricultural produce in Europe beyond the narrow confines of the Reichspakt. We shouldn't provoke the peasants and the army internal structure review. Slava Ukraina? Hmm. As 1936 rolls around, Hetman's Pavlo Skoropatsky, on behalf of King Vasil, sets out to conduct his yearly review of the army's internal structure. A personal project of Hetman, Skoropatsky has just dedicated much time and resources to grooming and developing military apparatus. Now, we are going to go down a certain route, especially with the Kaiser Redux here. I do want to get this Monsak Ukraine, so it is what it is. Wait for the 1936 summer as usual. As Ukraine, then report Khrushchev and go down the street. Do the last focus about the fate of the monarchy and have the king replace him with. Volodymyr Chehevsky. Choose the final option. You will then switch to the Radsock and the Monsock will be unlocked. So, I apologize if we're not going down the way you want us to, especially like Nationalist Ukraine at the time of this recording, but I did want to try out something slightly different. But we have the issue of the Russian language and even the Hetman's army, which is not very good. Oh, we're not doing great, but we could be, you know, worse. We could be Belarus or White Ruthenia. So, and there goes the economy. Black money hits Ukraine. Almost two weeks after the Berlin stock market exchange plunged into the abyss, throwing Germany's economy into unprecedented crisis, now that the crash of shockwaves have reached Ukraine, German and Austrian-owned companies have closed down and laid off the workers. The Ukrainian Herivna is losing value and the ex resource exports are shrinking exp exponentially. Let us hope that remains open to us. Europe remains open. Poland declared the Republic and White Guard. The White Guard, Belaya Gvardia, is a film based on the novel written by the leader of the pro-Russian movement, Mikhail Bulgakov. The film story describes the life of one Russian family in Kyiv. Just after the German occupation in 1918, the main characters are the Russian officers and Ukrainian citizens that participated in the defense of Kyiv from those disloyal to the new regime of Ukrainian nationals and different socialist groups comprised of soldiers in the army of Hetman Skoropatsky. The film analyzes, 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 or analyzes, analyzes the relations between the Russians and Ukrainians, conceived by Bulgakov as a symbol of national reconciliation, the White Guard encourages the unity of the kingdom and friendship of its people. Though some radical groups of the local nationals consider this one to be Russian propaganda, long live for people united and free. And until the next guy tries to take you over. Um, other than that, let's see. Ooh. Review the Navy. Establish Ukrainian Aviation Board. It's not bad. Foster Flying Clubs. Actually, basically, you get a free air doctrine by that. That's not bad. Oh, that's not bad either. Lessons of the Valkyrie. Cost reduction for land doctrine. Doctrinal experimentation. I think more motors attack. Establish Army Bureau. Uh, Research Bureau, I should say. Add technology tanks. Interesting. That's not bad. Logistical warfare. That's really good. Minus 50% supply consumption. Two artillery, more soft and hard attack. I like that. And more breakthrough. Refurbish Odessa Military Academy. That's not bad for more organization. That's just flat division organization. Reinforce rate. Expand the Kiev Officer School. Daily command power is not bad. Max entrenchment, more defense. Consolidate the reserve forces. War games. Hmm. I like that supply consumption a lot. A whole lot. Ooh. You get more breakthrough. You get more soft attack and hard attack. Way better supply consumption, especially if we have to go fight in the Far East. 5% of division organization is not bad. You get 5% force rate. 
Plus 10%. Ooh, we get 10% basically more division organization, though. You know what? I think we're... Ooh, that's not bad either. 50% more war support. Do we get any more war support here, too? I don't think we do. But you can always get more war support later on anyway, so... As much as... Actually, I really want to do this route. I think we'll go with doctrinal expansion. Or experimentation. Emboldened by the rise in global tensions, the Hetman has appealed for solidification of proper course for the army based on newly developed warfare doctrines for such a task. Eastern of the top officers' corps, composed of high of officers of the independence era, Alex Alexander Udovchenko, Yevhan Kolovalets, and Alexander Zarodsky. And get more motors attack, which is okay. We might use motorized eventually. Actually, that would be bad. And it's probably the other way is probably ready to go, but whatever. What do you have here? Black Monday sucks. Issue the Russian language. But at least we get rid of this too. That's good. Alright, review the Navy. Our future, which will be locked in the summer, so. Uh, that'll be fun. So, the Rada call snap elections after this one. Um, I mean, I guess we do get the tanks here, new tank to prototypes. Which is not bad. Not great, but not bad. Tanks are just not worth it, but I do like the supply consumption quite a bit more. Artillery, it's not bad. Review the Navy. Fortify the Odessa Harbor. Probably a good thing to do. You just lose 10 political power, huh? That's not terrible either. Two seas fleet, naval power projection, each ship a bulwark, power power superiority combo defenders. Yeah, I'd probably go with that one. Um, after this, ooh, it's not bad. Review the navy, eh. and that's the way we want to go over here. Rebirth the Ukrainian Revolution. So, so after this one, begin Ukrainian. Ooh, people's true king, huh? All right, so we got that one done, which is nice. Get some of this too. Yeah, this will three research slots too. So after this one, um, infantry weapons, blueprints are not bad. Tanks are not bad. Rapid mobility, rapid mobility drills. High armor mobility is a key in modern warfare, which is why we should make sure we have an ample supply of armored mechanical vehicles that we know how to pr properly utilize. I just want to rush to get to this one. I don't know why. Just because we can. A coon. Okay. All right. Infantry weapons are not bad. I mean, getting those tanks to use immediately is pretty good, too, but still. And I think even though we want to go mobility, in theory, we're still going to go Grand Battle Plan. I'm still going to go Grand Battle Plan. I love it too much. I've got problems, I know. Just going to get more ships out. Train the shippies. It's fine. Just show, throw them all in there. Central Rodis uses power in White Ruthenia. Oh, boy. And logistical warfare is not bad. Yeah, that'd be nice to do. Maybe this was, like I said, this was probably honestly better to do overall. But oh well. Truck artillery fire, eh, infantry weapons. I want those tanks, but still, I'm not even gonna release them that much. Logistical warfare, just in case. Although our largely flat terrain is usually seen as a disadvantage, there's one key upside to it. That is the ease of logistical supply. Taking steps to ensure we can keep continuously supplying our troops is our current chief directive. Oh, whoa, whoa! They're already killing each other. Okay. Agricultural crisis. Sons of Velcro, Ukraine is traditionally relied upon its valuable grain and trade with the German Empire in order to maintain its economic security, unfortunately. The current socioeconomic issues afflicting the Reich have meant that it's now far more interested in protect protecting its own farmers than taking the politically unpopular move of subsidizing ag Ukrainian agriculture. This could be very dangerous for us as without support from the German market or ruling class of agrarian landowners, could find it difficult to maintain their dominance in the countryside. Oh boy, that's not good. I don't want to touch that. KDP, huh? Alright, so be it. Um, well, let's just go warfare. We get 0.43 every day, which is not great. Could be worse, though. And at this point, is there anything here we could... Ooh, that's not bad. Ooh, that's not bad, too. Retention is not bad, but... Ooh! You know, I, I want to maximize our army XP gain, so... Uh, attack and defense. I think we need a lot in defense, in all honesty. Uh, logistics. We, I do want to use. What do we have for these divisions, actually? I'm not even making divisions, which is probably a mistake. We do want to get some motorized eventually, but not those tanks for now. Um, Honestly, we probably need offense. We probably honestly will need the offense. Mm, well, we got plenty enough here, so we'll just go with artillery for now. Maybe I should have gotten this guy instead. Yeah, it would have given us more. Dang it. More well, I made a mistake. God dang it. Oh well. It is what it is. Fall of Rome, alright. Uh, shock artillery, breakthrough, soft attack, heart attack. Well, nice security independence, but I established our research bureau. 
As we march into the future, it becomes plainly obvious that the new wars will rather be won using superior technology than any long-form trench warfare or flood wave tactics. As such, we should establish an army department tasked with staying on top of any new developments in doctrinal or technological announcements. Pretty much. And we're out of fuel, of course. Man, that sucks. Radical like socialists, huh? Social Democrats, Shumsky, Syndicalists, and Khrushchev is a totalist, of course. As yeah, we have our foreign military, division speed is not bad, motorized attack. We need some re serious recon, so. And if this doesn't go well, well, then oh well. We'll do the best we can. If I have to use consequences in the end, so be it. But not bad. 0.18 every day is not bad. About a week left. Collapse of the UBD, of course. Maltas join them. All right. Let's go that way, too. Oh, call check was just murdered. Wow. So it's June, so we should get events about the f future of our country, right? I guess in the meantime, deploy new tank prototypes. Experimentation in the tanking department centralized around the Kharkiv locomotive factory is something that we've been engaging in for almost a decade now. It seems like our efforts have started to bear fruit. Spirited by junior officer Ivan Chinyaksovsky. We should take steps to deploy our prototypes on the field. Nice. Why would you like tanks? Receive armor division template with the following composition. So, follow the kingdom of Finland. Why send over China? If you don't need about that, please go ahead. Quite an adventure. What's Finland up to now? Oh, national populist. Nice smoking. The rifles and carbines produced by Alexander Dzonko. The film Rifles and Carbines is devoted to the story of uh, the struggle between the R Russian and white forces under General Drozdovsky and the forces of the Ukrainian Kingdom in 1918 in the south during the Iasi Don March. The film, which was c conceived to be an answer to the Bulgar cause, White Guard doesn't try to point out possible methods of reconciliation, but raises by, by implication the potential for separatists and spies of foreign powers to be still be hiding among the Ukrainian population and both willing and able to try to exploit his weakness. Death to the enemies of Ukraine. We're still in the Rex which will probably leave in the end, so. Wow, it's weird to see that they are. Uh, they just got Rome. Wow, holy crap! Austrian Union Empire is looking okay-ish. Polish Republic, of course, which might join the Entente. A global Ukraine, huh? All right. Oh, Crimean campaign would be very good to get. That's the population size of ours. Oh, we're still mobilizing some. That's not bad. Well, oh, 30, 39 million people. That's actually better than I thought it would be. Huh? It's not bad at all. Let's grab some uh, concentrated firepower training. There's a little more effective in war than a punishing barrage of firepower on any given target. The effectiveness on such strategies increases even further in the event of utilizing specialized artillery in divisions. Which, of course, we shall do. We need way more guns, though. Way, 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 way more guns. We just don't have enough of anything, do we? Of course not. No, of course not. Don't lose too many planes. Just, just enough. So it's August. Oh, Mau Mau, no. There's the Mau Mau one. And the trend declares independence. And actually, we're going to repair ships if we need to. But now we have some uh, uh, naval doctrine. Base strike. Mm, fleet and being, maybe? Why not? Because we can. Oh, okay, 50 more political power. Yeah, just keep going with army logistics. Well, yeah, there you go. Even though it's only attrition, that's going to really help us get way more army XP. Like I said, something we really desperately need. Well, we still have Black Monday, so how do we do with this? Or the issue of the Russian language? It says all we have to do is wait for the summer, 1936 summer, and then appoint Khrushchev and go down his tree. Fate of the monarchy, huh? Alright. What's over here? Tanks. If we really need to make them, that's fine, but. There you go. Belgian Declaration of Independence. Well, that's nice. Good for you guys. Oh, we actually have another division. Nice. Well, this is kind of getting past summer. Not just technically still summer, but still. Shock artillery value? Sometimes using artillery fire is necessary, not so much for defeating the enemy, as much as disorganizing and discombobulating it is. Uh, effective campaign as such allows the enemy to show its weakness, which is why we should invest in artillery most effective in this department. Okay. 
15 more trains. Do we have any trains? Oh, I got plenty of trains in reserve. That's fine. So these divisions are not terrible. 18 combat is pretty good. Artillery is pretty good. We definitely need some engineers, though. So that's something we definitely have to research. Not bad. Ah, yes, a very red world. Wow. SRI is doing quite well, I have to say. Giuseppe Romita, huh? Did it not fire? Okay. Still okay. I guess we grab that or get some better. No, plans are actually pretty good. Uh, engineers, you need to put them on. Grab this one. Our future. After an independent situation, Ukraine is still difficult and various powers want to control the country. At the beginning of the summer of 1936, it'll become clear who will lead the nation to its future. Is this glitched? This might be a little bit glitched. I'll be honest. It's probably a little bit glitched. Or did I not choose something correctly? Um, I might have to force something to happen. Federalization and crisis in the coalition purge Khrushchev, Red Hetman, and trying basic freedoms with three people's king. Basic freedoms, federalization. Deadlock in America. Reverse engineer foreign artillery. Artillery has become more and more useful in warfare, so much so that many frontline battalions nowadays are exclusively based on punishing artillery fire. We should take note and go forth, examine the models utilized by our faithful allies in the north. Whatever we find out, we'll be able to combine our own designs and models. Which, on all honesty, I may have to just fire events off screen to see if the thing will eventually fire. Our future, the agricultural crisis, has almost shattered the Ukrainian economy and the stability of many of the nation's most important institutions. The king's grip on the country is weakening by the hour. Peasants lord of the Hetman want major land reforms. The pro-Russian malcontents and Ukrainian nationalists demand radical measures and the syndicalists are mobilizing workers all over the country. Various political movements struggle for power in a teetering nation, soon we can choose who will lead the Ukraine in the future. Ukraine will stagger on as it always has. So now, after using cons commands, quite literally to get the event, our future. The agricultural crisis almost shattered the Ukrainian economy and stability in the country. The king barely holds the country. For those loyal to the Hetman peasants want land reforms, pro-Russian forces and nationalists demand radical measures, and the syndicalists mobilize their supporters all over the country. After 20 years of independence, the situation in Ukraine is still difficult and the various powers want to control the country. At the beginning of the summer 36, it will become clear who will lead the nation to the future. Probably not, but by Khrushchev and the government. Nikita Khrushchev, a well-known but controversial Ukrainian social democrat, proposes the populist idea very popular among the peasants of the reorganization of, the, of our agriculture. we got to admit that maybe this proposition it seems like it could help Ukraine in a time of crisis. Maybe we should invite him to the government to implement these reforms. And a popular front. Although we've given Khrushchev free reign to reorganize the economy, many of our legislators in the Rada have prevented any attempts by Khrushchev to reduce the power of the Kulak landlords. That's why. Khrushchev has announced the creation of the Popular Front, which will unite left members of the Supreme Rada and give them enough authority to change the laws. The popular Front, which is not bad for us, I guess, technically, but still, could be better. But could be worse. Could be a lot worse. So yeah, like I said, I did have to literally have to use cons commands to make sure that we can actually, you know, go further in the focus tree, which I'm not sure why it's bugged, but at the time it's recording... It's 100% bugged as to why we didn't get it. Maybe I did something wrong, but that wasn't very cool. Nice. Very nice. Panama is killing themselves. It's January 1937. America has already fallen into civil war, like we said earlier. And we have the Kingdom of the New England. Oh, God. Oh, goodness. And, of course, we have Alaska's book. Do I think he plays Alaska sometimes well? Alaska sounds like a great nation state. I don't know. Alaska's kind of weird. That's Command Center. Sony plays them as well. So, eh, it's just a mess. But then again, it's America. Regent. Oh. Regency. Huh. She plays German Middle Africa, or Deutsch Middle Africa again sometime. I don't think I've ever played them in um, Kaiserreich, or Kaiserreich, I should say. Condemned for human trafficking. Nice. I should really play them, huh? Back to the basics. Ah. No, oh, Kudushev speech. <clears throat> Let's talk about this one first. As one of the few social democrats in the Rada, Nikita Khrushchev wields an enormous amount of power uh, or degree of influence over the Ukrainian peasantry and urban rabble. 
He's taken advantage of our troubles in recent speech, where he has openly called for sweeping land reforms, an extension of the electoral franchise, and ended the landlord dominance of the countryside. These demands are extremely popular among the lower classes and are giving them a dangerous idea to national stability. Despite this, perhaps we can make use of uh, Khrushchev's popularity and allow him to become the face of economic reforms unpopular amongst the rural landlords that would otherwise take a political hit over anyway. Dismiss Goro Spatsky and invite Khrushchev to head a popular government. Way more social democracy for now. Well, look at this guy, this funny corn man, huh? Click on the portrait to switch between Kroll and Hetman view. And now we're Social Democrats for now. A popular front. Quite popular. Solve the language issue. Expropriate Kulak holdings. Increase Kulak taxation. Collectivization. Distribute our new wealth. Mm, you do get more political power. Let's solve the language issue first. The Russian language is widespread in Ukraine, and the native tongue of many of our citizens, but it has never been an official state language. Evident Russian, a former role in the Ukrainian state, it allows to gain popularity among pro-Russian citizens and solve one of the divisive issues our nation fa faces. This one's not bad, of course, like I said earlier. Black money sucks, and, and that was really hurting us quite badly. Let's take a look at Russia. They're market liberals. Under Georgi Vernaditsky. Verdansky, huh? Ukraine like normal, members of the Russian Revolution, uh, divided naval staff, backwards industry, unfinished land reform, divided military staff, and further stabilization. So, uh, maybe we'll play Russia again someday. We'll see what happens. But a popular front. And language issue. Expropriate? Uh, ooh. Popular Nari Front. The Popular Front is a common name used to refer to an unofficial coalition of left wing forces, primarily composing of moderate social democrats, socialists, and vanguards. Despite the conflicting views held by the factions, they remain a united force, primarily thanks to Khrushchev, who was called like following among the peasantry of allowed himself and his allies to coerce the moderates and remain loyal for now. Khrushchev has held back on the previous radical promise, such as the abolishment of the monarchy in order to appease the social democratic majority, which fished for progressive change. His increasingly vague stance has helped maintain the front's unity while it's not completely rejecting the will of his hardcore supporters. The social democratic majority will also serves as a tool used by Khrushchev to appeal to Vasil, which surely opposed cooperation. Uh, had the vanguards been given a larger platform. Let's see how long this lasts. The language issue. Nikita Khrushchev has joined the government as leader during one of the darkest periods in our nation's history since 1918. However, before solving the economic problems, it is imperative that Khrushchev respond to the burgeoning pro-Russian movement, which has been, had a malign impact on our electorate in, in industrial Ukraine. One method that could help neutralize the popularities by addressing the language question. A domestic dilemma that has been lingering for years. The Russian language is used de facto by a substantial percentage of the population. But its usage is expressly prohibited in state institutions. This has given rise to accusations that Russians are treated as second class citizens, make the official make Russia the official state language, arrest important pro Russian leaders. Okay, why not? And then I don't know, we'll see. Has not invited him, has not invited him. Uh, we still have to do this one of course, but I think we'll probably increase taxation. We'll see. I don't want I mean getting rid of another class is good. I don't really want this one though. Well, let's see. Increase gulag taxation. Gulag or kurlaks or kurls is a category of relatively affluent farmers who are able to hire a lot of the poorest peasants and thus earn an enormous amount of money. Since they're the only group of farmers that's still able to fulfill our consumer needs, it'd be wise to let them have the lands but to impose additional tax on them. Now, I've already gone ahead and gotten early mobilization. We might go to partial mobilization as well. We'll see. Like I said, I want more army XP and such, but like, we can't get any more there. And I'm not sure we need more defense. We'll honestly probably need more defense. But, well, you know, we'll see. Pro Russian leaders stir up trouble. Leaders of the different pro-Russian movements are unfortunately managed to escape Ukrainian soil before they can be arrested. Many have sought temporary exile in Romania and Russia, with both nations somewhat hostile to our pro-German regime and aware of the Kaiser's gaze turning west. Mikhail Bulgakov has announced publicly that the nationalist umbrella organization Faith and Nation is ready to fight for the rights of Russians in Ukraine. Maybe he made a mistake. Another problem? Well, it's only a mistake. If you think it is a mistake. Let's see. We get more uh, weekly change. So that's not bad. So, increase the taxation and the fate of the monarchy. Actually, did I read this one? No. King Vasily has somewhat become of a laughingstock to the Ukrainian people. By having major powers with Khrushchev and seeing more issues solved in months than the king himself had resolved in years, he's only highlighted his own irrelevance. A former Austrian puppet king with no Austrian backing, his position is being only openly debated by popular front members. Well, that's, that's not good. Uh, I do want to do that one. Planes are okay for now. There's not a whole lot here. We'll get some logistic companies eventually, so let's and then maybe get some artillery stuff as well. We'll see. Nothing there we can really do. Um, anything there we really need to be concerned about? Not really, no. No, that's not good. Especially when I try to fight Russia. 
Kulak's face. Taxation. Nikita Khrushchev. Oh, look at that. Spanish Civil War. Uh, he has been tasked with resolving Ukraine's economic uh, stagnation. In a speech to Parliament, Khrushchev announced a new economic program aimed at increasing profits for the state. Largely, Khrushchev had wished to collectivize the lands owned by the Ukrainian uh, peasant landowners. The Kulaks, however, facing much opposition with the Parliament, he has been forced to take a more moderate stance. Instead, increasing taxation will be enforced upon the Kulaks, whose large workforce and high yields will continue to fulfill the populace's needs while generating additional profits. Surely these farmers won't mind a few less pains in their turn for the land. I can always do this one later. I mean, the political power is nice. 5% is not a lot, though, in all honesty. It really is not. Consumer goods would get really hurt badly, though. 5% more? Holy crud. Sorry to Oh, crap. Let's see. Dismiss Khrushchev. Alright, hit him on that. Well, we'll see. And, uh... Yeah, see. So now, with this path, we need to go... Do the fo focus about the monarchy. Oh. And I'm going to have the king replace him with Volodymyr Chekhovsky. Which is the final option. So we will get, probably get there and do that one. So. And yeah, let's see what happens. Icelandic independence. Oh, wow. They died really flipping fast. Mm. Not good. Not good at all. Austria is going to a pound town against other people. Alright. Austria do be looking kind of thicker. We do like a thick Austria. Oh, the funny symbol man. Funny symbol. Now, can we actually send volunteers? Are you guys black or bold, huh? Oh, hello. Are they just fighting against Switzerland, maybe? Political extremism, huh? I, mean, I don't mind helping them out in Spain, but... Fate of the Ukrainian monarchy. His Majesty King Vasily I, uh... Vishinya, yeah. Gave Khrushchev extensive powers and a to control the revolutionary trends sweeping the country in the aftermath of the crisis. Now that Khrushchev's initial program has been implemented successfully, many interest groups within Ukraine have begun to obey the continued prominence of the monarchy considering its relative powerlessness in the face of recent crises. The bourgeoisie like liberty, but preferred less radical government. The poor love Khrushchev, but hate the king, along with the republic. King shall fight Vol Volodymyr Chekhivsky to save the people of the kingdom. Leaving Middle Europa. As a sort of a membership of Middle Europa, we became incredibly integrated into the bloc, taking on a number of obligations while also receiving some benefits, such as in trade and mutual defense. These agreements no longer stand, or people have risen and established a socialist regime, leaving them all null and void. Why do we ever sign up to have of these? Now I can't go down there. The rebirth of the Ukrainian Revolution. The revolutionary Ukrainian party has been rebirthed as the Social Democrats who promised to heal Ukraine's ails have shown themselves more interested in getting Ukraine involved in revolutionary wars outside our borders. Even the king, a man so hated, seemed to be more interested in fixing her than the SDLP so we get something to support our revolution and get the stability of Ukraine needs. Our true people's king. Vasil isn't just the right man for the job, but being placed here is a puppet on the strings of the Reich's pact. Although birthed by the cursed Habsburgs, Leo Stefan was raised in the Ukrainian way of life, which opens a path to being molded into the king's people's king and raised our nation into something even greater. More political power, loose stability. Well, now we're radical socialists. Nice. Right, look at that flag. Against the Kushevites? Oh, that's not bad. Noble communes, huh? Ooh. Oh. Oh. Social problems always provoke uh, political instability. Lots of peasants join syndicalist national Russian separatist movements because of awful living conditions. If we want to save Ukraine from collapse, we should start a recovery program and help the poorest grain growers in central Ukraine, providing a population with cheap electricity they require. For this, we need cash. German loans. Oh. German loan for industrialization. Taxation for electricity. Electrification. Huh. Revive agriculture. New resources. That wouldn't be bad. Stabilization. Yeah, getting rid of that would be really good, but... Ukrainianization? Yeah. There are still some villages within our borders that teach school children Polish and Russian in an absolutely appalling situation. Now our government has decided to let this continue no further. Now schools will teach those born in our borders what it means to be part of the Ukrainian culture. Nice. Might need some synthetic oils. Improved tools are very nice, too. After that, let's go and grab some of this, too. Yes, 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 yes. Wow, it's not very much political power every single day now, is it? No, it's not. We're good. Trying to finish that ship takes forever and ever and ever. 
Any over here? Sviat Zoslav? Sviat Zoslav! Yes. No? Okay. 100 planes ain't too bad, and then you can duplicate it too if you really wanted to. Profits from increased taxation on the Kulaks. Our decision to raise tax on the Kulak landlords and spend the money in the poorest peasants have helped stabilize their agricultural sector. 60 to 70% of the state and the private farms are estimated to be now entirely self supporting. As a result of our increased support from the villages and farms, we can turn to other pressing issues with our faltering economy. That's one fire extinguished. Nice. Join the. Okay. Totalus in the bar tea coming. Nice. The bloody red morning. This morning, a sharp, sharp King Vasily the First was shot and killed during his daily morning walk. Long preferring to walk alone without his usual accompaniment of guards, the fact that something like this did not happen early is a bit shocking. The assassin who apprehended as soon as the shots were heard was a member of the banned Communist Party of Ukraine, led by one Nikita Khrushchev, long an opponent of our regime. Despite this, the king's death could not come in a more opportune time, although supportive of our reforms, the king had, not yet had yet to fully embrace the rebirth of the revolution with his death. Leo Stefan von Habsburg, not even yet a teenager, has been chosen by our government to replace the late king due to him still having years before he can take on the responsibilities. Leo Stefan, now King Lev II, has a perfect match, as he can be shown the truths of our ideals and policies. The king may mourn the death of her late king, but his death comes a new dawn for the nation. Under the dual rule of the monarchy and the people's government, the king is dead long live the king. Whoa. <laughs> Minus one manpower. Alright then. Ukrainization. Ukrainization. Autocephaly of the faithful. Legacy of Kimelsky. Combat Russian cultural chauvinism. Oh, Black Revolt's gone. Noble communes. <clears throat> Royal Nationalization Commission, maybe? Why well, we should put the authority of the Crown in the Commission that shall bring all business into our nationalization program? No more uneven land management. German introduced monopolies. All shall be set equal. All right. There you go. Nice. You have a slightly more fuel, slightly more things to work with. Good God, I just hope we can hold out against a Russian horde. And hold on to Ukraine as well. That's my hope. Good Lord, I hope that's that's my hope. People's King's not bad, though, even though we can release more stability, but that's okay. Props from the Kulaks? Nice. Reform military is not, not bad. I hope it's not, not bad, but it's not bad. So eventually, hopefully, get rid of this issue, but I could be wrong eventually. Review the Navy. Pretty, pretty unneeded right now. Seeking knowledge would be really good. Set sail to Ackerman. Oh. Save Malarus. Our northern brothers. Join the revolutionary fray. We might end up going to join in the Third International then. Yeah. White Ruthenian demands their territory. Following the rise of nationalism and an increasingly independently mined foreign policy, the White Ruthenian government has threatened war against us unless we hand over Brest and let us. Brest Litovsk and Gomel to them. Interesting. They threaten war, huh? Fine. Uh, well, I don't think war was going to come this fast. Hopefully, we can do well against these guys. Let's get some fuel first, though. So. And get our guys on the border first. Division's probably not super weak. Oh, they're not super strong, though. Just a couple days. And grinding out some army against these guys would be actually a really good thing. Four. Two. One. Come on, boys. Come on in. Nice. Four research slots. Now that's awesome. Um, anything else here? I mean, yes. I mean, I'd like to do all this stuff. Railway guns would be sound like a lot of fun. Actually, we're doing relatively okay for everything that we would really, really need. Maybe get some anti-air, perhaps. Guys, come on. You, you, you said you wanted it. You're a bunch of cynicalists. Whoa. What do you got to go? There? Mustafa Shalkai? Bruh. They must take a stability hit. Weak national identity. Reviving Ukrainian culture. For the better part of modern history, Ukraine has been, seen, has been under the thumb of a foreign power. Be it 
Russians, Poles, or Germans, we have had little to no chance for our own culture to thrive. This has not been helped by periods of Russification and other such attempts to strip our nation of its uniqueness. This shall stand no longer. Under the people's government, our culture will thrive, be a promotion of events featuring famous works of art, state-sponsored food expos, or funding the arts in general. We should not rest until Ukraine's culture is revived. Well, as may draw the ire of Russophiles in the East and the Poles in the West, we know our cause is just. Ukraine shall be a phoenix from the ashes, rising to meet the culture challenges of the modern day. One step closer to our goals. Wow! That's a lot more political power. Wow. I'm impressed. We could use, we could use, really use more uh, stability, though. Hmm. Where do we go, stability? That hurts for a little bit, but that's okay. Economic self sufficiency. Remove Black Monday. Ooh. Wait. We can still do this one, though. Oh. Yeah, I can do that one, which is fine. Move back Monday. So, you might, what's the point of doing that? We can get 25% more output there. Or get quite a few more factories. I, I want to do noble communes. I think that'd be good for us. Um, maybe anti tank? Maybe? Get some of this. That'd be good. Grab some of that as well. Noble communes. Some of the nobles that control our states have completely recent, complained recently about what might happen to the land. So, we have to con come to a solution that should keep the classes of Ukraine satisfied with its fairness. Nobles can keep their vast amount of lands as long as they keep fair terms with the peasants working it as well as having to engage in labor themselves. Nice. Yeah, let's help these guys out. How many guys can we send? Just one? That's fine. You guys are merely 12 combat width with those guys. You guys are merely 18 combat width with artillery. So if that's the case, let's come over here. We already have these guys. Honestly, I'll probably use artillery. Not artillery, just a normal infantry division. Oh, 22, huh? It's fine. Wow. Nice, though. More defense and organization. Very good. So, you one clear one to bet. 0.3 political power every day, which kind of sucks. But we'll do normal communes. Nice. And where are we at for this? Uh, I'll see what one we'll choose. And Skopatsky, everyone else. Uh, thank you. For now, at least. You'll be offensive. We'll see where we end these, these guys end up. A certain national vision. Dreams of greater Ukraine. Ooh. Just if our world goes way down. I like that a lot. Combat the Russian. Ooh. Early Ukrainization with Ukrainization. Well, that's nice. Legacy. It's not bad. Throw the Khrushchevites. Why not? Khrushchev and his merry band of thugs are a group of darned Bolsheviks. The clans support the social struggle for the people, but how can there be progress or prosperity if you just kill and starve them? We need to these criminals before they continue the plague, like spreading, uh, plagued like spread through the nation, especially after the murder of King Vasil. I want you in the thick of it. I want you to defend. Nice. Logistics ones are very good. Get some railway guns. Oh, oh, oh! Not bad. And then go one, two, three. There you go. Kherson. Guys, you wanted to go to war, that's a no, you don't. Bruh. Get that fat army XP, boys. You're not going defense, but whatever. Not bad. We already completed all that. We'll definitely have to go this way, too. I'll probably do this one. We will do this one eventually, but I want to wait for that one. I want a bigger industry first. Nice. 
Very good. What do you need? Way more military factories. Just way, 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 way more. Oh, there goes you and you know Britain. Alrighty. Way more guns. Not bad. Oh! Whoa! Well then. Oh, we can do this one. Second Valkyrie is already here. Well, we'll do that one. And the Cern National Vision. The RUP wish for independence and self representation of all Ukrainians, both within our boundaries, but also those without, such as those who are within Don region and the other areas. Securing them within our nation will ensure a truly independent great Ukraine for all the people to be proud of. Okay, get way more worse part two, which would be nice. Propaganda. You know what? Let's go grab it. That's honestly probably worth it. I probably see any volunteers as well. How many we Just one? Yes. Just fine. Syria so declares its independence. That's fine. No one really cares. That's not bad. Let's keep building, 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 and just get as much army speed right now as possible. Which, I mean, obviously we're not getting a lot, but some is better than none. Oh, wow. Definitely on the struggle bus here. Right, well, at least we both left. I mean... It's faction leader, huh? That bench is not bad. I think we'll go that one, though. Can we actually get a war with you? I'll let her put him under us. The case of Kushevites. After months of preparations, the trial of Kushev is close as allies and entire party apparatus has finally begun. Charge the conspiracy to assassinate the late king. The trial is a foregone conclusion. We all we all know to get a chance to speak. Present evidence again and defend themselves. All know that the Kushevites are doomed to a swing. The trial itself was a simple affair and harken back to the various show trials that the Bolsheviks carried out after the founding days of the Soviet uprising. Each and every man was convicted of treason. With a rope waiting for Khrushchev and others. What's more, the KMS has been formally banished, asset seized, and turned over to the people's government. Well, this was not. Well, this was a small step. It's a necessary one. For to truly revitalize the nation, the rot must be purged out. So long, you dude. Get riddance. So replace the people's scheme with the royal revolutionary system. More daily political power stability. You lose daily total support. Give more radical social support. There's a lot of totalism. Which is not necessarily a bad thing to lose. Slowly going up. Social Democrats are slowly going down. And her having to do the best you can there. Oh, Schneikies, you get in there. we will die. Can you actually win there? Maybe? See what you can do. No guarantees, but let's see. Seeking allies. Fail here. Sail to Ackerman. The great battle of the Ukraine's existence is reaching its crescendo as we set sail on Chaikas, celebrated oppressed Kenyan in Bessarabia and elsewhere. The symphony, like the violence and cannons of liberation, do you hear, brothers? Well, maybe. Oh, wow. Attacking like crazies. Do the best you can. Oh, I got. Oh, that's not good. All right. Let's go to Ackerman. Japan announces their ambitions. Poor radical nationalists. Cooperate with Shumsky. Alexander Shumsky is a very pro Ukrainian figure. However, he does harbor national syndicalism style beliefs. We could work with him to bolster pride in our nation, not to mention the fact that by keeping him close in contact, making sure he's not causing any risk with his beliefs. Not a bad idea. Hey, actually, when they're nice. Good job, guys. Oh, Belgium. Oh, 
Not bad. Hey, 65% stability is pretty good. 73% war support is not bad, too. What would we be able to strike into here? That's my main question. Maybe. They are national populace with very little national populace support under Carol II, but... A lot of manpower. Quite a few divisions. So we'll see. Maybe. But maybe not. War measures, huh? Actually, yeah, that guys have to have you. They have to have that. So, obviously, they have to have Ukrainians, but kind of already there. Keep building, keep building, keep building. You'll be fine there. You'll be fine there. Nice. Very good. Terrorist activity in Bessarabia? Oh, I hope it is. Nice. <clears throat> Salva Malavros. Oh, don't host. Oh, we don't have to just fight. We just do clear the marshes out. Stop, Georgian. What's that sound? You hear two up north in the Ruthenian marshes. I hear the stomp of German clad boots and the barbarous songs and flying colors of those imperialists. Come on, we shall cut the range short. Oh, crap. We didn't have to waste political power then earlier. Oh, we don't even have there. Hello. Failure of Operation Muromets. Despite our best attempts, our covert efforts to get the Romanian to hand over Bessarabia peacefully, also known as Operation Muromets, has failed. Despite having no direct evidence to link a government to the various terrorist attacks and cells that formed a result of our actions, the Romanian government clearly sees, or seems to know it was us, and so she just warned that any attempts to restore order within Bessarabia by our troops would be seen as an act of war. While the operation was clearly a failure, that doesn't mean we can't capitalize on the chaos that reigns in Bessarabia to quickly seize it from Romania with the small war. Regardless, the operation was a failure, and the only remaining avenue to capture lands by war, if that war comes sooner or later, remains to be seen. However, death in Romania will march for greater Ukraine. I'll go in. I'll clear the marshes out. Now I'll have to be peaceful. Okay, then. Chumsky? That's fine. Well, at least we broke over the river. That's the most important thing, in all honesty. That's by far the most important thing we could have accomplished here. Nice. Hopefully we do well. Now there's another river we got across as well, which sucks. Akademin? Railway guns are nice. Nice, good stuff, good stuff. For you, logistics aren't really all that bad. Oh, so you're gonna force the attack. Cooperate with him. Very good, very good. Uh, we could go work again now. Purge rash, radical nationalists. While we share a fervent uh, love for Ukraine, the OUN have done nothing for our nation besides poison the minds of our youth, convincing that living in the dirt is preferable to any sort of compromise or prosperity brought forth by us. They will not be missed. And then uh, future villages and future cities. Modern villages and future cities. Our village is not our, not our very city. It's lack like even the basic electrification for the street lights. This is unacceptable to a government as it makes Ukraine appear to be behind compared to our neighbors. Our cities and villages shall grow in size and have the tools and looks of a truly modern nation. Our neighbor shall be just as the future is within a grasp. Let's find those extra two divisions. Probably hope we don't need them. We'll see though. I'll just go in here. Hop out. Join that militia division first, and then those guys too. It's great. Keep these guys busy. Galats would be great to take. Our blood of your blood is great hip and alliance for the future of Ukraine. <clears throat> of all the various political factions find ourselves competing against within Ukraine, the national syndicalists under the control of Alexander Shumsky are the closest to us in terms of policy. Wishing to build a cynical state within a revived Ukraine is the gist of their policy, and the similarities between our own program is quite striking, seeing as how we both find ourselves adrift in a sea of hostile ideologues. Or ideologies, really. It's been agreed that both of our parties should merge, allowing us to imp implement our programs of all the make it of all the easier. 
Mechelio Yalavi. Our four ministers of personal friendship should be thus making the merger all the easier. The merger is, of course, just not just for convenience. It all allows us to keep a closer eye on Shimsky as he is seen as a threat to our rule. Regardless of the merger of our two parties, the future Ukraine will keep even brighter. Arm and arm will work for the betterment of the nation. Nice. Even better. What do we do here? Not very much, in all honesty, huh? Something I like to say a lot now, in all honesty. You try to be honest. Do I like your face? Not really. But you try to be honest. Mm hmm. I don't know. Something like that, maybe? I don't know. We've lost 3,000. Oh, we've got Kuban People's Republic. Huh. When do we get y'all? Okay. Now the battle cruiser? Not bad. Railway guns. Anti tank. Really good for army XP. Can't quite win here, but they're losing thousands of men. Like, this is ridiculous for them. Obviously, portions of this are not very good for us, but still. Alright, I want you to hold here. Take him out, take him out, take him out. You can take him out. I know you can. Nice. Go here and kill them all that way. Retreat that way. Oh, look at that. Now that's pretty nice. We've lost 14,000, cut off 87,000, which is pretty decent. We need way more guns, though. There. Do that. Go across the baby sphere, which is nice. Get in there, too. They like the leopard, huh? Odd, but okay. They want to attack us there, we'll attack them here, then. Really easy for them. What are we losing here? Infantry leader? Part of the reason why supplies are really bad though. I don't understand why, how we cannot take this out. This is so stupid. Let him attack us. Uh, so economic self sufficiency. We need to strive to become self sufficient as Ukrainian people are tired of expanding labor only to be part of another man's another empire's economic market. Where we the breadbasket no one thinks of. We shall provide for imperials no longer. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't tolerate cheaters like this. This is stupid. Come on, Ukraine, kill your own manpower off. You've gotta be out of guns completely. You have to be. It makes no sense how they're able to hold out against us. How are they able to fight over a river into here? How? Please show me how. Yeah, we really need more guns. Holy crap. Lots and lots and lots of guns, man. Getting this one would be actually very good for output, so. After that one, combat Russian cultural chauvinism. 
Some isolated villages in the feast have shown their colors to Russia, being stubborn and refusing to change their ta taught language and customs. If they refuse to integrate, they will be pushed away into the state that they treat with more respect than Ukraine. Twenty-nine thousand. They need to be suffering way more casualties if they want to attack like this, like crazy. Good. They're completely out of infantry equipment, which is very good to see. Keep getting us way more army XP, please. Nice. How? The only reason we couldn't take it is because of Galati. That's literally the only reason why. I'm gonna go with more defense. Um, like I see the Kimelnsky? Bodan Kilminsky, Valadimir the Great, Imstium Karam Karmal Iliuk. These are just a couple of the figures who fought for pride to create outside of the freedom of our people. We should be inspired to look up to these figures that fought for us and for the call arms that will surely be sounded yet again. Um, 38. Radar, why not? Good for that too. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that's that's complete bull right here. You should easily be able to win. You should honestly very easily be able to win, but... Keep going up more uh, Romanians. Need more fuel. How? Why? Ah, because of these guys. That's why. Fall of Atlanta, that's nice. Come on, this is so stupid. Should easily be able to win here. This guy just doesn't learn very much at all. Alright. And legacy. Trans revolt's been defeated, so be it. Against the Russian menace. Of all the nations that have come to dominate their beloved homeland, none have been more horrid than that of the Russian bear. Be it the subjugation of our people, the attempts to force us to become Russians, or even the near destruction of our culture, we suffer more at the hands of the Russians than anyone else, no longer. Will the government that truly cares for the people finally be empowered within Ukraine, or we shall reverse the table? Those Russians foolish enough to. Oh, to our lands it shall be forced out and driven back to Mother Russia. Our eastern lands shall be purified and the same horror they inflicted on us will be inflicted upon them. While in the final time finally comes for us to stand against this bear, we shall hold the line for we know that a truly free you came for the people, by the people, for the people, lives and dies with us. Death to the bear. Good. And then let's do some of these other ones like, uh, yeah, not that one. Let's do establish a Ukrainian aviation board. The Ukrainian aviation department has been part of the army branch since the onset of its creation. It's time we establish a separate overseeing board and make use of a more effective planning and strategic outcomes with regard to our Air Force. Fossil flying clubs. Flying clubs are easily one of the best investments one can make in the regards to support one national's defense or aviation forces. A rise of utility for the military aviation corresponds to a rise underneath the pilots. As such, we should support the creation of the aero clubs across the various urban centers. Deploy new fighter prototypes. In recent years, we've taken to developing our own fighter designs with some joint effort from our northern allies, primarily Germany. Our efforts have paid off. It seems testing has shown a very positive result. As such, we should deploy our newly developed aviation for mass production and commissioned domestic bomber designs. Bombers have been shown to be very effective in disabling various elements of the war machines of any given war nation. Whenever the next ma major European war comes, and it will, we must be ready. Depending on the designs utilized by our northern allies, primarily Germany, it's all well and good, but isn't completely available. As such, we must begin working on our own designs. So I have you guys here too. Language issue. Since uh, Nikita Khrushchev has joined the government as leader during one of the darkest per periods, oh. I'm gonna read this. Why did this one fire again? If you want to read this one again, please go right ahead. But um, we'll make it the official language just to make it get more stability right now. Ukrainization. 
Royal Revolutionary System, Dreams of Greater Ukraine, Noble Socialism, Profits, all right, the National Syndicalist Protest. Notable Ukrainian National Syndicalist Vis Vlas Chubar and Alexander Shumsky have opposed Khrushchev's decision to allow the usage of Ukrainian language in our administrative administrative institutions. They claim that this measure will help unify our country and that the unopposing usage of Russian language will lead to the growth of the separatist organization in southern eastern Ukraine. Millions of workers don't think so. All right, fine. Well, that actually hurt us in the end. Well, that's stupid. I mean, it makes sense, but it's stupid. It's stupid. Help sell them more. Get more extraction because you can. Get your fat butts in there, man. Keep these guys in place. Come on, take it, take it, take it, take it. Supply grace. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Too much. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, god dang it. There you go, nice. That's good, we finally encircled them. God dang it, these pieces of garbage. Nice. Go in. And there you go. As they should die. Thank God. Illustration. Good. Nice. And there goes the militia division. Two arms for Ukraine. In the history of a great nation, figures such as Vladimir the Great stand out as true heroes of the national cause. These figures are known to every true son of Ukraine, and their model still serves as perfect examples for armed forces. Bodan Kamilnitsky as one such man. Fighting against oppressive rule of the Poles, Kamilinsky's might establish a free nation that we are inheritors of such. In emulation of his legacy and the government's own promotion of men such as like him, various militias of peasants have formed and have begun attacking seizing land from Polish nobles that inhabit the west of our country. While these raids have been fairly tame, it cannot be said that they don't show what a rally that people can do. Within the sized lands, the former palaces of landowning Poles have been transformed into massive schools, greatly increasing education within a rural population. Wow. What's more, the land size seized has actually been handed over to the government's control by the people, giving us a chance to see it divided up correctly. With more raids planned yet or ongoing, it seems the people have finally found an outlet for years of oppression and victory for the masses. Wow. Another research slot. I never imagined getting this many research slots as uh, Ukraine before us, but I kind of like it. But I think I will finish off the rest of this camp, well, not the campaign, but this war um, off screen, just so we can get a couple more things done. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. We'll hopefully be in the Romanians, and maybe even go to war with Russia. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.